So welcome to the 2080 Thought Bubble Art Talent Search for 2021. We, we are online this year, just like we were last. It seemed to work pretty well. So uh, we've got three esteemed judges who are going to choose who wins paid work from 2080. Now, a few months ago, we asked people to uh, submit pages based on a sample script that we put up online. So uh, they have sent us through their artwork. Tharg the Mighty has gone through uh, 69 entries. Nice. Um, and uh, has chosen his top five. So we're going to go through those. Uh, our panel are going to give some advice, um, what they like about it, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and then they're going to choose a winner. So without much further ado, I'm going to introduce you to our panel. First off, we have a graphic novel editor from Rebellion, Olivia Hicks. Hello. Uh, then we have artist Dougie Braithwaite. Hello. And uh, then we have artist uh, Liana Kangas. Hey. Uh, Liana, what are the kind of things that you, you look for when you find a new artist, uh, when you're looking to find a new artist? What are the things that really stand out to you? Yeah, um, I think style, like a unique style, because comics medium is such a, you know, vast, uh, you know, thing. Unique style and uh, seamless storytelling is pretty important. And um I think those are my main two The you know, I see it when I see it, I guess, which is the hard part. Uh, Dougie, I mean, you, you started your career with 2080 back in the late 80s, 89. Um, what were the, uh, and, and this is where Olivia pipes up and mentions that she wasn't even born then. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what what uh, what did what did you learn in those early days from being at, at 2080, and what are your expectations coming into to this judging? Well, um, I learned a lot. Um, you had some great professionals um, that were very encouraging to me, and uh, um, you know, I wasn't afraid of asking questions from you know if if there's something that really confused me, you know, I wouldn't be afraid to ask. And they actually. Uh, expected me to, you know, they wanted to see me come up to them, ask some questions, you know, so, um, and, you know, I'd expect that of any young upcoming eyes to do the same thing, you know, don't be afraid to ask the professionals if you get the opportunity to, you know, because um, most of them are very accommodating uh, to, to, you know, just pick their brains, you know, and um, hopefully they'll be able to pass stuff on to you. But, um yeah, 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 I started pretty young and I was very raw. But as I said, I had good people around me and uh, they encouraged me and uh, made me feel like it was a profession that I wanted to stay in. So, yeah. And what are your expectations of, of what we're going to see today? Um, well, I'm, I'm, like Liana said, I'm looking for um, somebody who's you know, got a very individual kind of voice. Uh, style. Um, somebody could tell the story very clearly um, and somebody sticks to the brief. Um, you know, I've, I've, we've all seen the script and I think uh, it's a very, um, quite a sophisticated story, you know, in six pages. So there's a lot of information there that they're going to have to try and absorb and, and, and kind of put across to the reader. So this is what I'm looking for and hopefully we'll find uh, find somebody who could do that. Brilliant. And, and uh, Olivia, I mean, you, you're, you're, you're producing your own comics while also working at uh, Rebellion as a, a, a junior graphics novel editor. Um, uh, is this the kind of thing that, uh, that, that you, you relish or dread? Um, looking at other people's artwork. Mm. Um, I love looking at other people's artwork. Okay. I think... Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate looking at art. <laughs> That's why I'm in Never comics. Know. That's why I asked. Um, <laughs> no, I think like um, Doug and Leanna said, I'm looking for something individual that makes me want to know more. It doesn't necessarily have to be like the most anatomically correct story, like style. It just has to be interesting and dynamic and make me want to read more of it. I think if the style's interesting, then I'm not going to be like, well, the perspective was a little bit off in the back of that panel because I think to me, I'm more interested in like the style and the individuality and the charisma of the art, if I can be really pretentious. And I think we're looking, yeah, I agree. We're looking for somebody who can tell the story really clearly. I think I also like 
as a lazy writer, I like artists who can elevate the script. <laughs> so um, artists who are like trying to uh, think in like that extra level and bringing something else and bringing another thing to that script that a, a novel is because they're also telling the story. So like, you know, seeing their storytelling chops as well in things that maybe is missed off in the script or isn't the script and they're bringing that on. So I think that's also what I would be looking for. So um, we're going to... Uh, uh, not rattle through these, but 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 just uh, we'll keep the pace going because <laughs> um, the future shock um, format is one of those things, it, it, particularly for the for the script panel, where everything's got to be very tight. There's a lot of elements to uh, to include, and, and and this script in particular. I mean, this was a, a six pager rather than the standard four pager. Um, lots of things uh, to challenge. Uh, established artists, never mind somebody who's uh, who's starting out. So it'd be interesting to see what you think. First entry is from Andrew Strachan. Now, um, this is a, an interesting contrast of uh, colour and uh, black and white, which I, I, I very much assume is uh, is intentional. Um, uh, Olivia, I'm going to come to you first because uh, I mean this 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 is this is quite an interesting. Interesting style. What are your thoughts on on Andrew's work? I, I, I might point out that Andrew and I think at least one other on this list of regulars on the 2080 Art Stars competition. Okay, where we get people to send in um, uh, uh, pinups um, to to uh, get published in 2080. So um, his name I recognise. But yeah, what's your thoughts on on Andrew's work? Yes, this was a name I recognise as well. Um, I actually prefer the coloured panels, hmm. and I think. I think it's a. I, I like the inking style. I think it's quite, it's like quite confident, quite sort of classic 2018 in a way. Um, but I do think the coloring on the backgrounds, if I can be really boring, the coloring on the buildings, I really liked. So I kind of uh, seeing the detail, like you know, the sort of um, mm, uh, sort of a splatter, almost a, a sort of a, a, a what do you call it? It's the airbrush effect in it. Hmm. Um, the sort of the airbrush effect on the buildings, I really liked, and I think I could have done with the whole thing being coloured. Seeing the coloured panels as an option, I would have liked coloured all the way through. Um, but um, I really liked the uh, colouring on thing, and I thought the inking was because black and white is also quite difficult to do clearly, and I wasn't confused at any of the points of the black and white inking. I knew sort of exactly what he was trying, what he was showing, and what he was depicting. Um, I wasn't sure about the gap in the page art there. Um, I wasn't sure if that was space for a Terror Tales title or anything. So um, I think, yeah, if it was for a title, I think it would have been good to have seen the title placed into the artwork, like he placed the sound effects into the artwork. Um, and sort of to really see his intention of what of what that space was for. Um, I'm going to stop talking because I feel like I'll just keep rabbiting on. <laughs> no, 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 it's 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 all good. It's all good. I, I would, let's, let's move on to Doug. What, what's what's your thoughts on Andrew's on Andrew's work? Um, the, it's interesting because um, I'm, I'm going by what the the script. Um, establishes in the first scene um you know the 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 that's the most important thing is to set up um yeah to kind of lead the reader into the story and in to engage them straight away um i think the script was very specific about it being quite dark and uh, um atmospheric dingy the guys working in the underground um car park um the, to me the first scene i love the angle that he's used i think it's a uh, you know it, it's pretty dynamic um i like the way he's kind of tried to kind of um crop the image of the guy with the stairs um so the, the reader's focusing on this maybe he could have pulled back a bit more to establish more of the environment because i'm not clear what's going on in that first frame uh, the drawing looks pretty pretty strong, but I would have liked to have seen a bit more um, um, of, you know, it looks too bright initially um, to kind of, uh, you know, be that dark, dingy setup that the writer asked for. Um, and then kind of, I think, uh, 
again, you, you, um, Olivia mentioned the, 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 the panels that are really nicely coloured. Uh, I kind of wish they'd made a decision to go either with a colour or black and white mm. because okay. uh, I think he's kind of confused himself there and and um, if he had just gone with one approach, if he'd just done it all in black and white, it would have been a lot easier for him to kind of, uh, kind of uh, maybe just kind of focus on telling the story um, a lot clearer. But he seems to handle the colours very well. When he does do it, maybe he should have... Uh, I would have liked to have seen the whole thing coloured or just done in black and white, basically. Um, I don't know what uh, Liana thinks, but... Uh, <laughs> I... I I feel like um, I really like the way Andrew uses uh, panel placement, like things in each panel to lead you to the next, um, just seeing it without lettering, mm. you know, like, I feel like there was definitely room made to work with other collaborators, which I liked, but I definitely agree. I wish that the pure black and white panels were at least done in the gradient style mm. um, because it maybe would have looked more intentional. I like the pops of color kind of like focusing maybe on key panels. Um, I definitely think it could have been filled out all the way, um, but I do really think that the panel choices are really interesting especially with the action and stuff like that looks great. It, 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 it struck me that particularly, say, for example, on the, the, the um, image of the arm with the intravenous drip uh, going into it, I had a, a kind of Charles Burns uh, just feel to the inking, you know, it's nice, solid inking um, with uh, minimal hatching, which is always... <laughs> once one starts hatching, one can uh, get slightly out of control with it and uh, end mm -hmm. up covering pages in it. Um, but yeah, and, and, I mean, any more thoughts on, 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 on Andrew's, uh, Andrew's pages? Um, I think the single image of the camera is really strong. Um, if you could just scroll up back to the very top of page one, though, um, he hasn't included so that's an interior camera right but when you see the page as it as it's laid out um because you pull out of the room and you go exterior and then you cut to that camera and you think that camera therefore is an exterior camera whereas actually it's an mm -hmm. interior camera when you look at the script it is actually quite a comp um doug to say it's quite a sophisticated the script is quite technically challenging because I mean that moment that struck me when I looked at the script it's like you go interior exterior for the classic ah shot as he's been um, attacked mm. and then you cut back to the interior and that's quite difficult to sort of um, do on the on the page so mm. I think um, if he had like uh, included the camera in that first panel that would have um that would have helped to sort of something to sort of ground that um, camera a bit more in the initial interior. Um, but also if you wanted to do um, spot coloring, if you only wanted to color part of it, I think uh, blood is always the best bit to highlight. If you're looking to sort of do a contrast between black and white and only certain colors panels, I think always go for blood as your spot breakout. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, you, you, you mentioned the camera and I think you're right. I also, um, mm -hmm. the, um, the I'm, I'm, I'm finding the panel layouts pretty confusing because, you know, I think if he'd just simplified the grid and just tried to tell the story in you know, a simple kind of grid formation, um, it would have been a lot easier for him and a lot easier for the readers to understand what's going on storytelling wise. I think like in the next frame, you've got two frames, one within the other uh, at the top of the page. Is that the surprise look somebody, you know, looking round over his shoulder um, of somebody approaching him from behind. Um, the, to, well, to me initially, that looks like he's just looking up off frame. Um, yeah. I think uh, the intention would be probably best to have him if, if the camera was coming from behind him and him looking mm. back at the camera over his shoulder. That would have created much more of a dramatic kind of uh, moment. And also um, it kind of focuses a reader's eye, 
you know, onto the expression of the guy. And, and you realise that somebody's coming into him, looking over his shoulder. Then you cut back out to the scene of the tower blocks. And then I presume you hear him shouting, screaming. And then we get to the scene with the camera, as Olivia mentioned. It should have probably been established in the first frame. Um, and again, it's a lovely drawing of a camera, but you don't know what context it's in. Um, if it was probably, if we had established the camera in that first frame, you could have probably had the shot there with, um, pulled out slightly. So you still see some of the environment and the camera up on the wall and in the foreground, maybe you could have just done a slight shadow or silhouette of the attack. And then you could have started the blood kind of, um, you know, spraying up onto the camera. And I think this is why I was saying the script's quite is is, is quite sophisticated, and, and because there's a lot of information there that the the artist has to try and take on board and convey um, in each frame, um, and they have to re sit down and think about it and break it down properly. And I I kind of feel that um, there's certain elements there that uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, I can't remember the name of the artist who did this. Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Uh, there's certain elements in there that Andrew's done really well. But I think the, the really important bits, he's um, um, just, he needed to kind of just take a little bit more time to just kind of think it through um, a bit more. Uh, the, the one thing that's, that's slightly disturbing me is, is, is that how big a human brain is inside of, inside of a head? On that on that CT scan there is well, that I think it's supposed to be half the brain. Half the oh, right, okay, thank God for that. <laughs> I, I, I remember in the script I was like, really? Because I thought it filled into anyway. Right, uh, well, <laughs> let's uh, let's move on. Yeah, um, let's move on to to uh, take a look at the entry by Jeffrey Krozik. Here we go. So this is pure black and white. This is a bit more horror-y. and and I mean immediately I can see. The, the stuff we were talking about with Andrew's entry regarding the camera, mm. uh, Jeffrey has taken a, a different approach here. So I'll, I'll start off with, with, with you, Doug. Uh, you know, what, what, what's, your, what's your take on these pages? Well, immediately. Mm. I mean, he's gone for a slightly different angle, but a similar setup. So you, you, you're slightly you pulled back and you're looking down on the janitor. But... The, the difference here is that he's actually established a kind of uh, mood for the scene. He's made it quite dark. He's mm -hmm. included the graffiti on the walls. You kind of get an impression that it's quite dingy. Um, and he's working alone. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I like the setup to that. And then in the next frame, again, what I mentioned before as well, using a very simple grid to not overcomplicate things, you know, don't, don't try and, um, you know, throw panels in on top of each other unless you understand why you're doing it and how it works. So um, what's happened here in the next frame, he's done the over-shoulder shot, which, I, you know, is classic, but it moves the story along and it tells the story really well. Um, I like the way he's kind of cut, cut in the edges of the frames. So you, you kind of kind of, create that kind of um, jagged kind of um, sense of uh, danger coming in on him. And then the pull out in the next frame is really good as well. You've mm -hmm. got, you know, he's, he's established the town block pretty clearly. Again, you've got bits of graffiti on the wall. Um, you know, it's creating the, the environment for the reader to kind of settle into the story and understand what's going on. Um, and yeah, I kind of like what he's done with the cameras on this as well. I think, um, yeah, he's tried to break down the process of the blood spatter. I mean, he could have done it in one, but I like, I like the the, the way he's kind of taken risks there and, and tried to do something different. So it's very good. Leanna, what are your thoughts? I was just about to say that's my favorite panel. Um, yeah. That entire first page really hits for me. I would say the only thing that I would have changed is I would not have overlaid the what X-ray um, mm. over because it leads you back to that. 
Um, but I like the placement of the title. Um, you know, I, I just, and I also like the, um, the callback to the panel edges, the, oh, yeah. the janitor, obviously, um, to the, the doctor clearly discovering the, uh, half brain. So I like that first page a lot. One thing that, that you all highlighted was that you're looking for, for good storytelling. And in mm. terms of, of the, the, the pages overall, is, is that something that stands out for you with, with Jeffrey's work? It, yeah, I think Jeffrey, he has a strong sense of um, really kind of setting up the scene. His composition of his frames are very good. And the, the actual imagery within the frames is, seems to be well thought out. If we go back up um, a page again, um, where's that? I'll actually stick on this for a second because I think this is a scene change. You know, the police officers have actually come in to interview this this character. Um, so it's you know establishing a, a new scene. I think the frames, re the angle is really good. It's it's, um, it's, a, it's a complicated angle. He's done that very well, but I think to to kind of um, when you're establishing a new scene, you have to show more of the environment. And I think it's very important for eyes to, to kind of understand that. I think that's too tight a crop initially for, for, for people know Could that. Could have utilized that whole like top of the page exactly. to fill out the rest of it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it makes it like the middle panel is the most important panel, establishing yeah. panel of the page, when actually it's, it's the panel where they visit him in the hospital. Exactly. And they're leaving the hospital. You could have probably stretched that first panel across to fill the top of the page. And the um, second frame, you could have brought down and you could have halved the third panel and you could have made that second, um, second uh, panel more of an impact panel so to really kind of focus in and make that probably one of the biggest panels on the page with him revealing that he thinks it's his brother who's done all the killing. Um, yeah, the third frame as it is, it's again, it's, it's kind of thought through well. You can see that he's trying to establish the exterior of the hospital, but it didn't necessarily need to be as big on the page. You know, you could have just had them walking away, uh, kind of mid shot. And, uh, you know, just a slight kind of um, view of the hospital. And that would have worked just as well. Um, but I said the drawing's really good. Um, I like the characterization, the expressions on the face are really strong. Um, they have a lot of personality. Um, and uh, yeah, again, this. The, the <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just love his expressions on his faces. They're very good. Mm -hmm. I like, I, um, go, go on. I was going to say kind of what uh, Doug said with the fact that this uh, this script is so uh, sophisticated, which I totally agree, is like, you know, it's kind of hard for us to tell that whoever was getting attacked in panel two was like the surgeon and like things like that. And it just like goes to show how many things you have to think through in the entire script to like get things across or like if you have to end up leaning on the writer to kind of fill that in or versus like what can you do to like carry the weight um, drawing it on the page as well. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I think uh, sometimes you have to, even once you've laid out a whole story, you have to go back through again to kind of make sure that the setups all connect. And um, you mentioned the surgeon getting tacked later on in the story. I know he had a mask on at the beginning, but it's like, is there a way you could actually show um, indication? Like of, an ID tag or Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So that the reader can understand what's going on without the word, if, if that was the case. Um, um, and actually, if we go up a page, I think it's on page. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one because um, the character goes back to his parents, I think that is, and his dad, and he's accusing them of 
you know, lying to him about a twin brother. But the the there's a lot going on on this page um, in, in the script because you have the scene where he's having the argument with his parents. He kind of moves in with his mom and he's shouting and shaking her. And then you have a quick cut to um, sometime later, his mom's been murdered and there's blood splatter on the wall. And I, th I thought that was very, I mean, it was great the way it was written in the script, but I thought it was a very challenging uh, scene for, 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 for the artist. Um, because it's so difficult to try and kind of make that um, join from the scene where he's angry, shouting with his mum, to the scene where she's going to carry it out on the stretcher. You know, it's like, yeah. how, you know, he, he hasn't got any space to play with, but he has to try and convince the reader that this is sometime later. Um, and, you know, this is what he's done to his family. Um, and then further on, you have the scene where um, the detectives are looking over CCTV footage. Um, and again, that's another difficult one because you, yeah, you have to kind of break down the process of him smashing his head against the wall. <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the, um, was it Michael who did this? Uh, Je uh, Jeffrey. this Jeffrey. 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 Sorry, I think uh, Jeffrey has done a. You know, he's done a very good job. It's, it's, it's a very challenging scene, and I think he's he's done it pretty good. I really like the utilization of, like, texture and gradients and stuff in his work because, you know, his line work is so good that you don't really need it, but it just, like, enhances, I think, a lot of the panels. Hmm. Wonderful. Um, so we'll move on now to... Lee Milmore, which is another name I recognise from uh, uh, the Art Stars competition. So good to see people uh, trying both of those avenues. Okay. Um, uh, Leanna, let's start off with you uh, on, on this one. Okay. Um, I already, so this first panel I thought was an incredibly cool uh, angle. Um, and I also liked that uh, it looked like Lee also lettered it. Mm as well, which really helped me. Um, just like knowing that an artist can, you know, make space for their own work and also, you know, letter uh, the stuff at the same time. Um, and it read really well for me and I really like how detailed Lee's work is. Mm -hmm. um, especially, yeah, that the surgery scene mm. is, I get automatically sucked into this, like, and I don't know if it's maybe the panel placement was really well, but um, it kept me continuously, you know, staring at it. So I think it did its job. Um, it reminds me of a classic. It's like, you know, when I think Future Shock, this is kind of thing I would expect to see. Completely. Yeah. Yeah, the classic. I love the style. Yeah. Olivia, what's your thoughts? Um, I think if I can just scroll, can I scroll up to the top? So, okay. So all I'm going to say is like about the placement of the camera in every single entry. <laughs> this, uh, but Lee has the placement of the camera right, mm -hmm. looking down on the person. So even though you don't necessarily notice that on the, I didn't notice this on the first time. When I look back, I could see that this was there, and I think that was excellent like because that's not actually in the script to add that in but he added that into the script also um jeffrey added in um moles on opposing cheeks of the twins that was not in the script but he <laughs> added that in to sort of differentiate and like stuff like that thinking about other ways to convey the story visually which the writer might not have thought about i think a very uh, always a good quality to have in a, in a writer and an artist sorry um and then if you I think agree as well. There's that um, going to the operational scene. That was my favorite segue to yeah. it that I'd seen. I think um, it establishes the shot well, but it it does pull you in as you think having the POV shot of the surgeon would be the best way to necessarily pull you in. But I think this one actually 
is the, uh, is a is a really great way of telling that information, and it's a slightly different shot than we perhaps when we've seen, but it like it really works well. And I think the sort of like angle of the of the brain scan sort of at like slightly tilted at angle, it slightly leads you off the page to the next page. And I think again, as you as both Doug and Leanne says, the style is a future. It's like he has completely read the it's like matching I mean you want to have your own style but it's also knowing what or, like what audience and what venue you're get to, you're selling your style to and he has just like matched it to that future shock style yeah, really the, really well yeah also I think um he seems to yeah he seems to reference he wants to reference stuff the right stuff for the scene you know he wants to try and get it right you know it's, it's very important mm-hmm. for him that the you know, um, I don't know if you just go up to, I mean, I could say with this frame, you know, he obviously he's looked at the reference for, you know, inside a hospital ward. Um, the the detail on the police officer's uniforms, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's a difference between the de- detective and the sergeant. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's really tried to think things through. And I like his frame composition as well. He hasn't gone through anything, anything too um, um, flash. He hasn't gone from many broken panels. He's just tried to tell it the story clearly and and tried to kind of move the story along um, in, in, in an easy way, which, you know, um, and that's why I think... It, yeah, his style really appeals to me because it's easy to read, even though it's very detailed. And he, you can see he loves to put all this information in, but it's it's um, it's the way he, he applies it, and he, he seems seems to kind of uh, break things down in the right way. Um, even this scene where he's uh, yeah, the janitor is about to smash his head against the wall. It's very interesting the way the ang- the shot he's gone for. You've got a back view of this guy against the wall, and then he's got the the, the CCTV footage um, numbers running along the bottom. The timestamp is so time awesome. Exactly. And the, and the wave of the, the wave of, of the, yeah as the panel border. Mm-hmm. Because it's like a really difficult that when we were talking about it in this one for the last century, it's like what four or five different settings or times that you have to convey in about six panels. Yeah. So there's lots yeah. of different ways to do this. I feel like the way he's done this, it feels much more cohesive in this yeah. entry that the top tier is one time frame mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the second tier is a different time frame. I think keeping okay. the mo- those two moments on separate tiers. It was the is a much better choice. Uh, I think than I really liked how Jeffrey used panels to kind of change it. But I think having he had um, the these first two on two different tiers, which whereas if you keep it on the same tier, it's like nicely encloses that a little bit more, makes and makes the dump to the different time scene hmm. uh, like a little bit stronger. I think the only thing about this one is that I he's uses a lot of detail, which I think works, but the floral. Hey, uh, the floor patterned on the walls. I think with the blood splatter, it's it's not. Mm-hmm. If he'd yeah, had yeah. the time, if he had time to really focus on that wall pattern and then focus on the blood on the wall and like really make that into a nice moment, mm-hmm. I think that would have worked really well. But I think because this is such a compressed storytelling, I think it would have been probably save 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 yourself a bit of time doing the and just keep yeah. those walls maybe a little le- less um with the floral pattern would be my maybe my advice yeah mm-hmm. uh, totally and then the blood would really stand out in the next scene yeah then he could probably i mean he seems to have put quite a lot of blood splatter on there but because of the floral pattern so strong <laughs> you can't yeah. really yeah. see it. Uh, i think yeah if he had his time again he probably would not have put the floral pattern on the wall mm-hmm. but i mean this yeah, if we go through this, yeah, this, the court scene, um, it's great. You know, you've got the over-the-shoulder over view of the judge, and he's facing um, the the you know, the guy who's going down, basically. Uh, but again, it's like the establishing shot. You know, you're seeing you know, a fair portion of the court. You've got people in there. 
Um, so you, you're understanding clearly what's going on and you, you, you get a feel of being there, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jesse's just, not Jesse. What's his name? I keep forgetting the name of the character, but um, the, the, sorry, the second frame on that page where he's yeah. getting carried or that there's so yeah. many angles he could have gone for there, but I think that works really well mm. because he's looking back mm -hmm. at the viewer you know, pleading his innocence as he's being dragged away. And I think that's done really well. Yeah, I think this trapdoor is so difficult to, it's such a difficult piece of comic, of storytelling yeah. to get in um, mm. because it's not, it's, mm -hmm. I think, and the last one, it felt a bit like the, it was like another dimension almost when I was looking, if, when I look at it and I don't look at the script, I think almost there's another dimension. This one feels a little bit more like he's in the world, he's dropping through a trapdoor. But I still think um, it is a little, it's a, it's a bit of a confusing, it is a confusing jump. This is um, the hardest page, I reckon. Yeah, the, it's the, so difficult. Yeah, because yeah. this is, this is the, this is the payoff page. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you want to create that sense of horror and, and um, the psychology on that page. And so the shots are very important. You know, you, you know, you could do a really simple shot, but if you, I think on this page, I was thinking this through, that the only way I know that in the script it asks for a shot of the trap door opening and then in the next frame you've got his feet coming down. And uh, you wanted the expression of the father in the bed of him seeing what was going on, not being able to move. I think uh, if, again, it's like, how can, you, how can you combine all these elements into one frame and make it as impactful as possible and create that sense of uh, horror? Mm. Um, and right, he's, he's done, part of it really well. I think he's created this really dark atmosphere. He's got shadows across the wall. Mm -hmm. um, you you really get a feel of the father being helpless, not being able to move very well. It's that, that first frame is, is difficult. It's, trying yeah. to, it's like, do you do it from the father's viewpoint of the looking at the trap door opening, you know, him not being able to do anything in bed but that means you doing a shot over his shoulder and then you still have to show the expression on his face as well. Um, it's, it's, um, but I think what, what's been done here is again, very good. You know, he's paid a lot of attention to, to a lot of the details. He tried to tell it his own way. Um, mm -hmm. And I think uh, what he's done here is, is, is very good. Um, but, um, uh, as Olivia mentioned, it's, it's a very difficult, um, it's a very difficult page to handle and <laughs> yeah. do it right. Um, and, that, and this is why I said the script is, you know, is a real challenge for, for a lot of, you know, the, for, for, for all these eyes, um, because there's so much information there and a lot of psychology to play with. There's loads of angles you've got to really think about. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I think um, the, the, I think the, the patrol in this is, is superb. Mm. I think that the same elements of it remind me of Chris Weston. You know, it's mm -hmm. just some of the detail, um, and uh, yeah. Uh, at the risk of sounding like a bit of a freak, I think the rendering on the on the gnarly feet was so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, give me more of those nasty, untamed feet. But like I think the rendering of the inking on that was so strong. And yeah, as you as you were saying, um, the rendering on that final the gotcha panel is yeah really nice inking. Brilliant. All right, lovely. Well, that was Lee Millmore. Uh, so we shall move along to Luke Mulver. So let's start off with you, uh, Leanna, on this one. A uh, bit more a, a, a texture on this one. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. I also really, I, <sighs> hmm. this is 
one that I really liked, uh, the drawing style. Like I thought that, um, I thought it was really interesting, like, uh, almost kind of time wise, like from the car and stuff like that, mm. almost at the beginning, you couldn't really tell like what time period it was in terms of like, is it present day or is this like, you know, a couple decades ago or whatever. Um, and I, I really like the depth of like how gritty and dark it is. Mm. Um, I'd be interested to know like if it would print well. Um, and um, yeah, I just think they have a very interesting use. I, I wouldn't have laid out the page like that, I don't think, um, but it still reads well, or I mean, I still read it okay, so. Um, but I do find it interesting that we had a couple different of the contestants that have a very similar view of like the cameras, mm. which is pretty interesting. Um, and I almost see like a little bit of a, almost as if Luke and Lee sort of read them the same, but they have different styles or like interpreted it kind of similarly, which is cool. What I liked about Luke's style was the characterization I thought was so mm -hmm. strong for him. Like I felt like the way he drew all the different characters, you could like, I think like the way he rendered the characters, I really loved. They all looked really distinct. They all looked really different. Mm -hmm. And it really sort of, because you got established character in such a short amount of time and everybody, I think the three key characters, particularly the two police officers and Aaron, all was very well defined. Mm -hmm. And I think um, even like down to the missing person, you see her there and it's very clear it's the same person when they find her, whereas I feel like it's sometimes in the other entries that you wouldn't know it was the same person without looking back at the script and reading the, and reading the dialogue, whereas this one, she is such a the distinct style, but also look the same in each panel. So you could easily follow the characters. I think that helps with the storytelling on this one. Mm -hmm. And I love the crunchiness of the texture. I love a texture crunch in the background. So I think all the rendering of the grayscale and the stairwell and everything worked really well for Luke on this one. I think with that page too, like he's saying a lot in these panels without putting too crazy amount of detail, even with the surgeon, with the shadow um, and things like that, even though it's zoomed in, I, I could tell too, like you could kind of tell that that was the surgeon without having to really know. Um, yeah, storytelling is really, it's, is quite strong um and the, the angles that the angles he uses in, in the setup frames are very strong as well um i love that top frame the first one yeah um it's, it's weird he said he's, he's, yeah he's trying to create an atmosphere to the story you know he's you know he wants a clear kind of um distinction of wants to show his clear distinction of what he, he sees this as a horror story. Um, and, uh, you know, the lighting and um, the textures, as Olivia mentioned, um, it's all very, very strong and it's very well thought through. And the characterization, again, the faces, the expression is very important. Um, he spent a lot of time making sure that everybody is clearly defined. Okay, lovely. So moving on, we're on to our uh, last contestant, which is Stephanie. A bit of a bit of a different style to the others. Uh, a lot more, a lot more rendered. Um, Doug, let's go to you on these. What 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 what's what's your feeling? Um, well, I, I, I'm sorry, where well, I could see that um, she's got a good um, use of uh, handling textures. Um, I love some of the, the detailing that uh, she's applied to the frames. Um, and uh, yeah, in the top frame, first first scene, you know, she's really tried to kind of um, establish the environment. I could see what she's trying to do. I'm not too sure the perspective is right or maybe the perspective I think maybe his perspective is right, but the figure 
um, doesn't seem to sit in the frame. Um, you know, doesn't seem to kind of be grounded in the in the frame very well. But um, again, also I like textures. Um, the, the scene of the janitor reacting is very good as well. That's really nice um, expression on his face. Um, it's, yeah, slightly, com it looks like confusion rather than shock. Um, but uh, I think that works works really nicely. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting. So many people on that last frame on the first page when you got the reveal of the brain, everything. They've always draw, they've all drawn the frame pretty small. <laughs> I think that should be in the biggest frame on the page. You know, this is where the title is probably going to go as well. Mm -hmm. to the story and um, relatively you know you, you could have probably crunched everything down a bit more and made that last frame probably take up most of the page um, or, or, or three quarters you know, or a third of the page sorry um, but again that's the detailing on 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 textures are very nice. Um, yeah, and, but then I start seeing, there are a few little things here that, you know, she's leaving too much dead space. She's, you know, the, the establishing shots um, need to be more focused. Um, to, to me, that could be just like any row of uh, tail blocks and it's not really clear that the two characters in the third frame are actually relate in any way to, to the hospital that you know you can't really tell that they've walked out there and I think that's very important and then the top frame as well if you just scroll that yeah there that frame there um I think the the, the the way the angle's been, the, the way she's approached the angle here, I think maybe she could have, uh, again, this is, this is kind of weird kind of juxtaposition of the figures and the background. There seems to be um, a lot of kind of dead space, even when you apply the word blooms. Yeah, um, I think um, you could possibly have kind of, um, cropped in or well, actually pulling out a bit more would have probably worked a bit better actually I think on that context but you know it leads up nicely to the next frame you get a close-up of the character in bed and he's you know telling them about the you know he thinks it's his twin brother but they said when you look at the next frame after that that's where I get confused I'm not too sure what's what's happened there you know I don't know where they are um, you know, and how it relates to the previous two frames. But again, the, the textures are great. You know, it's got a good understanding of light and form with shading. Um, it's good. Um, Liana, what's, what's your feelings? Um, I... So I think this could have worked well as like a silent comic, but obviously that's not the the thing here. Um, I think that uh, Stephanie uses a really interesting way of putting wild details that draw you in, kind of like the janitor in the camera in the second panel. Um, I found that really interesting. Um, I don't think, and I keep coming back to lettering because I'm so ultra conscious of it, but I don't think like there was a ton of space left for like organic, you know, flow of the panels to read well with the lettering. Um, but I am obsessed with the face of the janitor. Stephanie draws the janitor so well that, you know, like the next page that that's still him. Um, like specifically like how his mouth is like kind of droopy and like seems kind of like, 
you know. Um, but I agree with Doug. I couldn't really tell that it was the hospital from the outside. Um, and I did like that the surgeon looks like he's carrying a briefcase. So he kind of like looks more like uh, a surgeon to where the reader like is understanding. Um, and I like that angle of uh, the attacker and the overlay of um, the surgeon's arm and everything. So, so uh, really to... cool use of like ink work. Olivia, what, 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 what's your thoughts? Um, well, you know, I'm already gonna lose my mind for the camera being uh, established, clearly being in, in, as a, in, in the interior. I'm like, yes, uh, that wasn't in the script. So that's why I think sometimes, you know, I mean, sometimes I write stuff in scripts and it doesn't make any sense. And the artist has to come back to me and be like, no way, that doesn't make any sense. So never, never be ashamed to just say to the writer, actually, I don't think you thought about spatial relations when you wrote this. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that the camera is established, um, they've taken the initiative to establish that camera, establish, you see the reflection of him. I think it adds that sense of him being watched, which you're supposed to be getting from the script. And I think it's quite a difficult one. Like, how do you artistically convey, visually convey the idea that someone is like, it's something that seems really, it's quite kind of a complicated thing to do without showing the attacker. Um, so I think showing it and then, have, and then, so then that then clearly leads us back that we know that this is, the, the blood is happening in the thing. But I think I would have liked a clearer sort of panel border between um, the camera with the blood and the interior and the exterior ah, shot of the, mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. I agree that I don't think there is enough space for lettering. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, that's always something. I, I, yeah, that is a, that's a difficult one. Um, but yeah, the, I don't think there's really enough space for lettering. And I think the shot with the attacker attacking the surgeon, I actually think slightly too much information was given in that panel with the twin. I know, like, we're all excited to have seen what the twin would have looked like in this style, but I think that maybe gives away slightly too much of what the twist could be and maybe should have been kept he should have been kept in silhouette but that could just be me i love the arm coming over the frame border the panel border of the needle i think that looks i think that's a really cool little touch um mm -hmm. and i agree probably there's too much space in the dead space in the hospital panel i don't think i have too much to say other than echoing or people other people saying again the characters are well defined you can clearly see who the characters are from panel to panel to panel and it is an interesting that sort of mri scan it's the only one where we've had a front way <laughs> scan mm -hmm. of your man i think that's actually quite an interesting that's yeah, sort of like looks, looks yeah it's an like interesting one <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like when you see um mri scans of babies in the womb they look horrific <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the panel transition uh, in between the blood and everything, because that was the one that kind of got me. Because even though it's laid out really well, it doesn't mm -hmm. read exactly like what's happening. Uh, kind of confusing, but almost like that dog's about to get murdered, which I yeah. would <laughs> um, So I think also the Janus um, logo, I think is cool, but you can't read that it's Janus. And Janus is the two headed two-faced roman gods that's supposed to be like uh sort of a i think that you need to be able to read this janice so that when you finish reading the script you go back you go oh it's janice like the roman god with the two heads i think it's the logo here it's a nice one but it's like um slightly hard to read on the guy's hat that's like such a little quibble <laughs> but like um yeah i think if that was clear to read that would then be easier for the reader when you finish reading you go back inside you go janice solutions boom but it's, it's a, a thing that, that came up in the, the script judging competition um, was that uh, Ram V mentioned the, with, with Future Shocks, if there's a mystery, it's kind of good to, 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 to be able to do it in such a way that, that the reader thinks, well, I could have got it if I just paid a bit more attention. No, it's the whole Sherlock Holmes thing. Like all the clues were there. It's just that you didn't necessarily um, see them for what they were. So with something like this, the, the, the whole Janus thing is, is very much there at the beginning. And it's a detail you don't notice, but you know, working together, script and artist working together on something, it's it's you know the kind of yeah Chekhov's gun, Chekhov's hat, mm. that uh, you know that, uh, I think, part of it. 
that's why this is such a hard conversation because you can't just call up the right and be like, wait, what are you mm. talking about? Why is this important? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely. Well, uh, that was Stephanie's uh, entry. So now is the moment of truth when uh, our judges decide what entry is going to win. And be- before we do that, I just want to say, you know, thank you to everybody who submitted this year. You know, as the judges said, it's not an easy script. Um, you know, it, horror is hard at the best of times, but this is it's particularly um, difficult for uh, even professionals. Uh, to do so it, even attempting it is is uh, you know t- to be applauded um and especially thank you to uh, to our finalists who uh, who made it through only one winner though so uh, the judges are going to go away and decide who's going to get the paid work with 2018 <laughs> So the judges have deliberated and uh, it turned into a unanimous decision. The winner, huge drum roll of the uh, 2021 Thought Bubble Art Talent Search is Lee Millmore. Congratulations, Woo-hoo. Lee. Um, he will now get paid work writing a future show, uh, writing, drawing a future show. Right. <laughs> like hard work for nothing. He's like, wait, wait, wait. Congra- <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> You've won the chance to do the thing you don't want to do. Um, so Lee, Lee will get the chance to draw a future show for 2080 and for which he will be paid. Uh, just to, to, to round off, I mean, what were your, what were your final thoughts on, on, on Lee's artwork? Why, why did it stand out to you? I'll go, okay, I'll go first. Um, I before reading the script, I tried to take a little peek at the pages, and Lee's uh, work lays out very well on a page for me. Um, I'm a huge design nerd, and so that immediately wrapped me in. And I think it just works really well. Very cohesive, very interesting style. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I, I agree with Lee. Um, it's a, it's a very kind of clear storytelling, but lots of uh, information he, he's kind of captured the information very well he's taken it on board uh, detailing and some of the frames is uh, exceptional um and th- that establishing page the scene where you know we have so much going on he he's, he's done it in a very unique way and he's done it very very well um i think he definitely stood out amongst the other entrants Brilliant. Olivia? Yeah, I think every page of this was so strong. And like, I know we're talking about um, your first page being your calling card, but um, I think Lee really kept up the energy all throughout the four pages that was made. Um, The use of sort of overhead shots in page three to sort of foreshadow the coming down the trap door on page four. The fact that um, there was some, not a requirement, but like there was clearly space for lettering and it was being thought about. Um, and the rendering, the use of interesting panels, especially with like smashing his head against the wall and use the static as a panel yeah. border. There's some really excellent decisions being made throughout the comic. Brilliant. Fantastic. Well, congratulations to Lee. Uh, and uh, thank you to our wonderful panel of Olivia, Doug and uh, Liana. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, look through these and to, and to pick a winner. Pleasure. For having us. Thank you, nice to meet you all. No worries. No worries. Fantastic. Well, that's it for a, another art judging panel for Thought Bubble this year. We'll probably be back online next year since it seems to work so well. So uh, until next time, it's thank you from our three judges. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and it's thank, it's thank you from me. Take care.